Welcome back. In this video, we will wrap up our series of financial calculator videos by showing how to use the calculator's depreciation and break-even worksheets. Great. Let's start with depreciation. As we know, there are two main ways to calculate depreciation, using either the straight line or the accelerated methods. Let's illustrate the straight line method first. Imagine we have the following problem. A piece of equipment costs $8,000. It has an expected life of four years and a residual value of $1,000. What is the equipment's depreciation expense and net book value in year three? All right, this is a typical question on the CFA exam. Fortunately, the Texas Instruments BA2 Plus can tackle such problems in no time. Let's see how. First, we need access to the depreciation worksheet by pressing second, followed by depreciation. As always, we clear any residual data by pressing second, clear work. The calculator has different program depreciation methods. To toggle between them, we use second, set. Let's examine some. SL stands for straight line method. SYD is sum of the years digits. DB denotes declining balance method, and so on. In this video, we will use only two of these methods, SL and DB. Let's set the calculator to straight line method first. All right, now we are ready to add the data we will be working with. To do that, we scroll down. The first term is LIF, which stands for the life of the asset in years. We input four, followed by enter, and then we press scroll down another time. The next term is M01, the starting month. We use M to indicate to the calculator the period when the asset was added to our balance sheet. We assume that the equipment is acquired at the beginning of the financial year, so we leave the term to its default value of 1. The next term is CST, which represents the asset's cost. In our case, it's equal to $8,000. Then we input the salvage value, SAL. It is $1,000. Finally, the calculator asks us about the year for which it needs to compute the output. In our case, we would like to calculate the depreciation expense and net book value in year three, so we enter three. I believe we are ready. Let's scroll down to examine the output we obtained. The annual depreciation is $1,750. Then we have RBV which stands for remaining book value at the end of the year. This term indicates the net book value, which equals $2,750 for year three. At the end, we have RDV, the remaining depreciable value, which is $1,750. If we need to calculate the depreciation for year two, we can simply scroll up and enter two. The calculator will update the calculation, and we can examine the results instantly. All right. Let's demonstrate how this works with the accelerated depreciation method, the double declining balance method. To do that, we press second depreciation, followed by second set, until we find DB standing for declining balance method. As we could see, by default, it equals 200%. This is the acceleration factor that approximates the pattern of the asset's wear. By definition, the double means 200% of the straight line rate of depreciation. So we leave this figure as it is. When we scroll down, we see that the calculator still remembers the data that was entered previously. So we keep scrolling down until we reach the year at which we would like to calculate the depreciation expense and the net book value. Let's say our target is year three. We enter three, and then we examine the output. 
the depreciation expense equals $1,000. And so does the net book value, RBV. Congratulations, you just saved some precious minutes using the depreciation function of the calculator. This time will be particularly important during your CFA and FRM exams. Before we wrap up the topic, let's examine the break-even worksheet. It helps you calculate a company's break-even point, as well as the sales level needed to reach a certain profit level. To do that, we need to analyze the relationship among fixed costs, variable costs per unit, quantity, price, and profit. The logic of using these five variables is straightforward. You have to input four parameters, and the calculator solves for the fifth when you press compute. This is the most important rule, so please try to remember it. Let's provide an example. Imagine that Company X produces phone chargers, which are then sold for $20 each. The variable costs per unit are $17, while the fixed costs are $5,000. We would like to calculate three unknowns. The break-even quantity of sales, the quantity that would result in a profit of $8,000, and the sales price which will turn to a profit of $20,000, provided that the volume of sales is 2,000 units. All right, first things first, to access the break-even worksheet, we press second break-even, which is the second function of key six. Let's provide the parameters we know and solve the answer to the first question. FC, the fixed costs, is $5,000. The variable cost per unit, VC, is $17, and the price, P, is $20. Then we have PFT, which stands for profit. We would like to find the break-even quantity of sales. So, by definition, break-even is the number of units that the company must sell to have profits equal zero. The default value is zero so we leave it as it is. The last term, Q, is what we don't know. Therefore, we press Compute to obtain 1,667 units. Great! Now let's solve the second piece of the puzzle. We would like to calculate the quantity at which the profit would be $8,000. That should be easy. We scroll back to the profit, PFT, and type $8,000. Then, we find Q and press Compute to find that it equals 4,333 units. Finally, we need to find the sales price at which Company X will realize $20,000 from 2,000 units sold. We enter $20,000 for profit and $2,000 for Q. Then we scroll back and calculate for the price, P. The result? is $29.5. Well done! We've come to the end of our financial calculator video series. Now you should be able to solve, with the calculator, almost all questions you will be asked. Keep up the good work, and do not forget to practice your calculator skills using different CFA or FRM exam questions. Good luck, and thanks for watching.